hello students welcome back do hit the subscribe button if you're here for the first time now we are going to solve these two problems which says that determine the resultant internal loadings acting on the cross section through point c and through point d assume the reactions at the support a and b are vertical so we have the vertical supports here at a and b and uh, half of the beam is subjected to this triangular distributed load and half is subjected to this triangular distributed load. So we want to find the internal loadings at the cross section through C and at the cross section through D. So for that I am going to consider segment AC and segment AD. So if we are going to consider segment AC and segment AD we must find support reactions at A. So let's say that we have support reaction at A. Let's say this is A Y and we have support reaction at B. Let's say this is B Y. So to find A Y we must consider the free body diagram of the whole beam and we must convert this distributed load into the concentrated load. So we can replace this distributed load by a corresponding concentrated load and that will be acting somewhere here and the distance of this uh, since this concentrated load passes through the centroid of this triangular area so the centroid of this triangular area is will be somewhere here and the distance of this centroid from this end A will be one third of this length along which this uh, triangular load is acting. So we will replace um, this triangular distributed load by this point load or concentrated load and the magnitude of this point load will be equal to the area of this triangle. So the area of the triangle is 1 divided by 2 and this base or we can say this multiplied by this, the height multiplied by this. So 1 divided by 2, uh, 6 k per feet into 6 feet since this is 6 feet 3 plus 3 so this is 6 feet so 6 feet so feet will cancel out and we will be uh, left with 6 into 6 is 36 that divided by 2 is 18 so we can say 0 0.5 multiply 6 multiply 6 so this is 18 so we can say that this is 18 kips this is 18 kips Similarly, we must replace um, this triangular distributed load by its corresponding uh, point load. So let's say we will have that uh, this will be our point load and it will be acting, it will be passing through the centroid of this triangular area. So the centroid of this triangle will be somewhere here at a distance of one third of six feet. So and again the same magnitude since the, the height of the triangle remains the same and this base remains the same so we will have 18 kips as well we will have 1 divided by 2 6 kip per feet into 6 so we will get that same 18 kips so this is equal to 18 kips similarly this distance will be one third of this 6 feet so which is one third of 6 is 2 so this is 2 feet we can say that this is 2 feet and similarly this is also one third of 6 feet so this is also equal to 2 feet. So to find a y we must apply the sum of the moment about point b so the sum of the moment about point b that must be equals to 0 the counterclockwise moment is assumed to be positive. So now a y is producing the clockwise moment about point b so you will write minus a y and the moment arm of this a y from this point b is this distance this perpendicular distance which is 3 plus 3 plus 6 so this is 12 feet right so we will multiply this with 12 similarly this 18 kips is producing the counterclockwise moment so you will write plus 18 and the moment arm of this 18 kip force from that point b is this total length minus 2 feet so total length is 12 so we are left with 10 so 10 feet similarly this 18 kips is producing the counterclockwise moment so we will write plus 18 and the moment arm or the perpendicular distance of this force from that point b is 2 feet so you multiply this with 2 
and this is equal to 0. So from this we can say that Ay is equal to minus 18 into 10 minus 18 into 2 divided by minus 12. So we can say that minus 18 into 10 minus 18 into 2 divided by minus 12. So Ay equals to 18 kips. So we can say that Ay is equal to 18 kips. Now once we find Ay then we can consider a C segment of the beam. So let's say this will be our free body diagram and then we have to pass a cutting section through C. So, so we, 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 we know Ay, Ay is equal to 18 kip and then we must pass a cutting section through C. So we'll be left with a C segment. So this will be our AC segment. So now this is that point C and here we will have some different intensity of the distributed load. Let's say this is represented by omega. So we must find this. We are given the intensity of the triangle distributed load at A and we must find uh, the intensity at point C and point C is 3 feet from end A. So how to find this uh, intensity of the distributed load at point C? We must consider um, these two triangles. We have this triangle and we have one another triangle like this. We can consider this triangle. So let me, uh, let me draw this omega here. Let, let's say this is that, this is that omega that we want to find. This is that omega. At C, we want to find the uh, distributed, uh, distributed load intensity. So we have this big triangle and then we have this small triangle. So these two triangles are similar triangles and we can compare uh, the ratios since the corresponding, the ratios of the corresponding uh, sides of a similar triangles are always equal. So we can say that omega, this omega divided by this which is 3 feet. So omega divided by 3 is equal to this 6 divided by this 6. So 6 divided by 6. So 6 divided by 6 is 1. So we can say that omega is equal to 3 kip per feet. So now we know that this is 3 kip per feet. So now uh, we know this intensity. So now as you guys can see this is the load distribution is somehow like this. This is not a triangle, this is not a rectangle. It's a combination of rectangle and a triangle. So we will have one triangle here and we are having one rectangle here. So we know now we will replace um, this uh, rectangular distributed load by its corresponding point load and we will replace this triangular distributed load by its corresponding um, point loads. So, so now let me draw a line here. Let's see, this is. So now you guys can see that what is the area of this triangle? So the area of this triangle is um, this, uh, which is three kips. Let me write this is three kip per feet. So three. So the area of a rectangle is this 3 multiplied by this, this 3 multiplied by this 3, so 9, right? So we will replace this uh, rectangular distributed load by its corresponding point load and it must be acting at the mid length of a, this rectangle because the centroid of a rectangle is at its mid length. So it will be at this distance will be uh, 3 divided by 2, so half of this. And the magnitude of this will be equal to the area of this rectangle, which is 3 times 3, so 9 kips. So we can say this is 9 kips. And this distance is, we can say that this distance is 3 divided by 2. Similarly, we will replace this triangular distributed load by its corresponding point load that will act somewhere here. Uh, so let's say this is that... Um, point load which will rest, uh, which will replace that uh, triangular load and its magnitude will be equal to the area of a triangle so the area of this triangle so now the height of this triangle this is the height of this triangle which is 6 
minus 3. So this height is 3 kips. So now the area will be 1 divided by 2, this 3 into 3. So we can say 1 divided by 2, 3 into 3. So now we have these two point loads and we have replaced that distributed load by its corresponding point loads. And the distance of this force from this end A will be one third, right? So from this end, this is one third and from that end, it is two third, right? So this distance will be one third of three. So this means that the, the line affection of this force will pass through this line and this distance will be one feet. So we can say that this distance is one third of three. So this is one feet. And now at C, we want to find the internal loading. So we will have NC. Let's say this is NC. We will have the shear force. This is VC. And we will have the bending moment. So this is MC. So we are going to consider segment AC and we want to find the internal loadings. So if we apply the sum of the forces in the X, that must be equal to 0. Towards the right is our positive X. Now we have NC in the positive X. We have this NC in the positive X. So we will write plus NC. And there is no other force in the X. So this means that NC is equal to 0. Similarly, the sum of the forces in the Y must be equal to 0. Upward direction is considered to be positive. Now we have this AY and we have this VC. And we have these two forces in the downward direction. So we have VC in the upward direction. So plus VC plus AY which is 18 kips. And we have this which is 3 into 3 is 9 divided by 2 which is 4.5. So minus 4.5 and minus this 9 kip. So minus 9. This is equal to 0. So from this we can say that VC is equal to minus 18 plus 4.5 plus 9. So we can say minus 18 plus 4.5 plus 9. This gives us minus 4.5. So VC is equal to minus 4.5 kips. So the minus sign tells us that VC is actually acting in the downward direction. So the, sh the resultant internal shear force at the cross section through C is 4.5 kips and it is acting in the downward direction. Similarly, if you want to find the bending moment at C, we must apply the sum of the moment about point C that must be equal to 0. Counterclockwise moment is assumed to be positive. Now we have MC in the counterclockwise direction. So I will write plus MC. And this AY is producing the clockwise moment. So I will write minus AY is 18. And the moment arm of this AY is this distance, the perpendicular distance from that point C is 3 feet. We will multiply this with 3. Similarly, this is producing, this force is producing the counterclockwise moment. So we will write plus, and this is 4.5, uh, 4 9 divided by 2 is 4.5, multiplied by the perpendicular distance. So the perpendicular distance of this force from that point C is two third of this right so two third of this so two third of three is two so we got that from this end it is one feet so from that end it is two feet so we will multiply this with two and similarly this nine keeps this is producing the counterclockwise moment so we will write plus nine and the perpendicular distance of this force from that point c is three divided by two because this is uh, this this replaces the rectangular distributed load. So we'll, it will be acting at half length of this 3 feet. So 3 divided by 2 is 1.5 and this is equal to 0. So now from this we can say that MC is equal to 18 into 3 minus 4.5 into 2 plus 9 into 1 point, sorry, minus 9 into 1.5. So this is, we can say 18 into 3 minus 4.5 into 2 minus 9 into 1.5. This gives us 31.5. So the internal bending moment at the cross section through point C is 31.5 kip feet. And 
since we got the positive sign the assumed direction is accurate mc is in the counterclockwise direction so this means that it is in the counterclockwise direction now to find the internal loadings uh, at the cross section through point d we must consider uh, this ad section of the beam so let's see that now we have to pass a cut in section through that point d so this will be our free body diagram now now as you guys can see that when we pass a cutting section through d we are left with this complete triangle so we will have that same 18 kip um, point load right so 18 kip point load is acting somewhere here and the distance of this 18 kip from from this end a will be one third from this end this is one third of this six feet so one third of six feet is two feet so we will have this distance as two feet and we have a y equals to 18 kip and now this is that point uh, D. So at D, we will have ND. We will have VD. And we will have the bending moment MD. So segment AD. So again, we will apply the equilibrium conditions. So if we apply the sum of the forces in the X, that must be equals to zero. Towards the right is our positive x. Now nd is in the positive x, but there is no other force in the x. So this means that the internal normal resultant force at the cross section through d is equal to 0. Similarly, the sum of the forces in the y must be equal to 0. Upward direction is considered to be positive. Now we have vd in the upward direction, this vd. So we will have plus vd plus a y which is 18 kips and this 18 kips is in the downward direction so you will have minus 18 and this is equal to 0 so from this we can say that v d is equal to 0 similarly to find m d we have to apply the sum of the moment about point d this must be equal to 0 counterclockwise moment is assumed to be positive now m d is the assumed direction of m d is in the counterclockwise direction so we will write plus m d and this a y is producing the clockwise moment so i will write minus a y is 18 kips and the moment arm of this 18 kip from that point d is this distance which is six feet and this 18 kips is producing um, counterclockwise moment so we will write plus 18 and the moment arm of this 18 kips from that point d is six minus two so that is four or in other words we can say that this length is always equal to, from this apex point of a triangle this is always equal to two-third of this length so two-third of six so this two-third of six is four feet so from this end this force which replaces this triangle distributed load will be at a distance of four feet so two-third of this so this is equal to zero so from this we can say that md is equal to plus 18 into 6 minus 18 into 4 18 into 6 minus 18 into 4 so this gives us 36 so md is equal to 36 kip feet and again we we got the positive sign so this means that md is in the counterclockwise direction <clears throat> so at point d the normal uh, force at the cross section through d is equal to 0 the shear force is always also equals to 0 and there is only internal bending moment so that is 36 kip feet so this is the solution of this particular problem i hope this will help you in your learning do subscribe engineers academy for the solution of such more problems from mechanics of materials by rc hibler